Gases are distinguished from other forms of matter, not only by their power of indefinite expansion so as to fill any vessel, however large, and by the great effect heat has in dilating them, but by uniformity and simplicity of these laws which regulate these changes. Good day, Batang IS! Today's lesson comes from putting together three different laws. I am Mrs. Karen Rose Baez and I will present to you the presentation prepared by Mrs. Minerva M. Ramos. Unlike the named gas laws, combined gas law doesn't have an official discoverer. It is simply a combination of the gas laws that works when everything except temperature, pressure, and volume are held constant. The combined gas law is the law which combines the Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and Boyle's Law. It is an amalgamation of the three previously discovered laws. These laws relate one thermodynamic variable to another by holding everything else constant. The interdependence of these variables represents combined gas laws which states that the ratio between the product of pressure, volume, and temperature of a system remains constant. The three properties of gas, pressure, volume, and temperature, usually change at once under experimental condition. The four possible variations are as follows. Both temperature and pressure cause an increase in volume. Both temperature and pressure can cause a decrease in volume. Temperature causes an increase in volume and pressure causes a decrease in volume. Temperature causes a decrease in volume and pressure causes an increase in volume. The equation can be expressed as follows. For Boyle's law, volume is directly proportional to 1 over P. For Charles law, Volume is directly proportional to temperature. And for Gay-Lussac's law, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. When combined, the three gas laws can be expressed as P times V all over T when the mole or the number of mole is constant. By comparing the same substance under two different sets of conditions, P sub 1 times V sub 1 all over T sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 all over T sub 2. Since V sub 1 times P sub 1 times T sub 2 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 times T sub 1, we can derive the following formula. In solving for the initial volume, V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 times T sub 1 all over P sub 1 times T sub 2. In solving for the initial pressure, P sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 times T sub 1 all over V sub 1 times T sub 2. In solving for the final temperature, T sub 2 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2 times T sub 1 all over V sub 1 times P sub 1. In solving for the final pressure, P sub 2 is equal to V sub 1 times P sub 1 times T sub 2 all over V sub 2 times T sub 1. In solving for the final volume, V sub 2 is equal to V sub 1 times P sub 1 times T sub 2 all over P sub 2 times T sub 1. And in solving for the initial temperature, T sub 1 is equal to V sub 1 times P sub 1 times T sub 2 all over P sub 2 times T sub 1. Since we already know the different formula that we can use, let us apply the combined gas laws in solving the following problems. Sample problem number 1. A small bubble with a temperature of 8 degrees Celsius and pressure of 6.4 atmosphere rises from the bottom of the lake to the water's surface where the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 1 atmosphere. Calculate the final volume of the bubble if its initial volume was 2.1 milliliters. 
So these are the given. Initial pressure is 6.40 atmosphere. Initial temperature is 8 degrees Celsius or 281.15 Kelvin. Initial volume is 2.1 milliliters. The final temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 298.15 Kelvin. And the final pressure is 1 atmosphere. So we're looking for the final volume. So we are going to use the formula V sub 2 is equal to V sub 1 times P sub 1 times T sub 2 all over P sub 2 times T sub 1. So V sub 2 is equal to 2.1 milliliters times 6.440 atmosphere times 298.15 Kelvin all over 1 atmosphere times 281.15 Kelvin so we are going to cancel the unit atmosphere and Kelvin we multiply 2.1 to 6.40 and 298.15 and divide the answer by the product of 1 atmosphere and 281.15. So the answer is 14.25 milliliters. The final volume is 14.25 milliliters. Sample problem number 2. A sample of gas occupies 249 liters at 12.1 millimeters of mercury pressure. The pressure is changed to 654 millimeters of mercury. Calculate the new volume of the gas. Assume the temperature and moles of gas remain the same. So these are the given. We have the initial pressure of 12.1 millimeters of mercury. The initial volume of 249 liters. And the final pressure of 654 millimeters of mercury. According to the problem, the initial temperature is equivalent to the final temperature. So it remains constant. Oh, so we're looking for the final volume. So our formula for the combined gas law is P sub 1 times V sub 1 all over T sub 1. And that is equivalent to P sub 2 times V sub 2 all over T sub 2. Since we have the same um, initial temperature and final temperature, we're going to cancel the temperature. Okay. <clears throat> So, we are, we are going to use the formula V sub 2 is equal to P sub 1 times V sub 1 all over P sub 2. Okay, do you get it? Do you get why? It is because P sub 1 times V sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 times V sub 2. Okay? So, um, to solve for it, that is equivalent to 12. 0.1 millimeters of mercury times 249 liters all over 654 millimeters of mercury so we're going to cancel the unit millimeters of mercury multiply 12.1 to 249 and then divide the answer by 654 so the answer is 4.61 liters. Our final volume is 4.61 liters. The combined gas law can be used to explain the mechanics where pressure, temperature, and volume are affected. For example, air conditioners, 
refrigerators, and formation of clouds, and also used in fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. Thank you for watching Batang IS! So what's your take out for today's lesson? Shout out to Frances and Diane, Tan Generosity, Humility, and Nobility. God bless Batang IS!